Hi, Glendover families. Today is Monday, April 20th, and it's the first day of Earth Day week. Uh, Fayette County has created an, uh, a bingo card for Earth Week this year, and if you would like to participate in it, you feel free. I've um, shared the link. Um, and today being Monday, it is Watershed Day. So you could, some of the activities I suggest for today, you could figure out um, which watershed your home is part of. You could calculate your family's water footprint. You could um, explore your neighborhood and try and find a drain um, that has a stencil or has um, been decorated, as well as a few other activities. Since today is the watershed day, I have a story I'd like to share with you all. It's called Turtle Watch. Toro and Jirosan were friends. Jirosan showed Toro how to feed crabs with pieces of rotten fish. He taught him to dive for beautiful sponges. When the sea was too rough for swimming, he trained him to sit very still and watch the seahorses swim around the seawater in the deeper rock pools. Toro's sister, Yuko, didn't like Jiro-san very much. He's weird, she said. Last year, my friend saw him sweeping the beach with a broom. No, he's not, said Toro. He's old and wise and full of wonderful secrets. One day, Toro found Jiro-san sitting on a big rock. What are you doing? He asked. I'm listening, Jiro-san said. The wind is bringing me a message. Toro sat on the rock and listened, but all he could hear were seagulls crying. Ah, said Jiro-san at last. Now I understand. My old friends are coming. Who are your old friends? asked Toro. You'll see, said Jiro-san. Next day, Jiro-san brought two brooms and handed one to Toro. For sweeping the beach, he said. Toro's heart sank. Yuko was right after all. Jiro-san was weird. There's a lot of rubbish and broken glass on the beach, Jiro-san explained. My friends won't come if there is broken glass. They'll, they know they'll get hurt. The two friends swept the beach from one end to the other. They collected all the rubbish and put it in Jiro-san's old cart. Soon the beach was cleaner than it had been all summer. Jiro-san looked pleased. Meet me by the big rock tonight, he told Toro. Toro ate his supper as fast as he could. You seem in a big hurry, said his mother. I am, said Toro. Jiro-san's old friends are coming. Who are they? His mother wanted to know. It's a secret, said Toro. What kind of secret, Yuko asked. Toro didn't answer. He washed his hands and went out to find Jiro-san. Look, said the old man, pointing out to the sea. Toro saw a school of dolphins riding the waves. Are they your old friends, he asked. No, said Jiro-san. Perhaps they will come tomorrow night. Toro waited patiently all the next day. In the evening, he met Jiro-san again. This time, the old man had brought his old boat out of the shed. Jiro-san packed up the oars and they pushed out to sea. After a while, the old man said, We've got company. Toro watched in amazement as a huge whale tail or whale flicked her tail up out of the water. She had a young one swimming beside her. Are they your old friends? Toro asked. They're friends, said Jiro-san, but not the old friends I meant. Maybe they will come tomorrow. The next evening, Jiro-san was in his boat again. 
Where are we going? Toro wanted to know. Over there, said Jiro-san. He rode out to a secret cove on the, on the little island. There, Toro saw three large fish with swords for snouts. Are they your old friends? Toro asked. All fish are my friends, said Jiro-san, but these aren't my old friends. They seem to be late this year. Perhaps they are not coming at all. Don't be sad, said Toro. Perhaps they'll get here tomorrow. Do you want to come and wait for Jiro-san's old friends? Toro asked Yuko after supper the next day. Yuko wasn't doing anything, so she followed Toro to the big rock, kicking the sand as she walked. Shh, said Jiro-san. I think they're here at last. Yuko and Toro saw a dark shape moving towards the shore. It was huge and bobbed up and down on the water like an enormous cork. At last, the children could see what it was. A turtle. She's coming to lay her eggs on our beach, said Jiro-san proudly. The turtle scrambled ashore and started digging with her flippers. When the hole was deep enough, she laid almost a hundred round, creamy colored eggs in the nest. Then she filled in the hole with her hind flippers flung more sand over, over it with her front flippers, and hurried back to the sea. She is going to tell the others, said Jiro-san. What is she going to tell them? asked Yuko. That the beach is safe, said Toro happily. The next evening, evening Yuko came to the beach with a brand, with a new broom. Can I help sweep the sand, she asked. Of course, said Jiro-san. The more of us there are, the safer the beach will be for the turtles. The three friends swept up all the litter dropped by the holiday makers during the day. Then they sat on the rocks and watched more turtles come ashore. There were lots of them, all huge and old and wise, just like Jiro-san. Now, said Jiro-san, you must be patient and wait until you hear from me again. Eight weeks later, later Jiro-san told the children to meet him at dusk. Sit on the rocks, please, he said, and watch the ground. The children looked and waited for what seemed like hours. As the moon rose, they saw something moving under the sand. Something small and fast and eager. <gasps> it's a baby turtle, cried Toro. The eggs have hatched. Soon the, ba the beach was full of baby turtles. There were hundreds of them all scuttling down the sea, the children couldn't believe their eyes. Jiro-san isn't crazy after all. Is he? Toro whispered to Yuko. No, said Yuko. He is old and wise and full of wonderful secrets. And that is the end of the story. So boys and girls, I hope you start this Earth Week by thinking about how we use water and how you can help save the water, just like they did in this story. They helped clean the beach so the water was clean and safe for the turtles. All right.